Okay, well, if you're taking a statics or strength materials class or, or just studying for the FE, chances are you'll come across shear and moment diagrams. So I'm going to put together a series of videos here for you to kind of go over the basics. This is an applied approach. We're not going to get into the calculus behind it really too far, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to take this, uh, start with reactions on beams, you know, from given loading. If you need help with reactions, I got a series of videos. I'll post a link of those, to those uh, down below. But right now we're just going to take this problem where we've been given given you know certain uh, certain reactions here so we have you know eight kilonewtons on one side 12 kilonewtons on the other side and what we want to do is we want to go ahead and find the maximum shear and moment right in this beam due to the applied load well the best way to do that unless you're really good and, and know right where that that is um, the best way to do this is to draw a shear and moment diagram so that's what we're going to do so the general procedure for this is just to first you know solve for your reactions which you know i've already done i've given you this you know eight kilonewtons on one side 12 kilonewtons on the other side there's actually a video to this as well if you if you want to take a look at that okay and then what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to um we're going to basically go at right we're going to jump right into drawing the shared diagram to do that right any Anytime we we see a force, that's going to change, you know, the the shear on this beam. So we're not going to get into all the technicalities of that, but basically the, the applied approach is if you see a force and that force goes up, your shear is also going to go up, right? If you see a force and that force goes down, your shear is going to go down, and the amount the shear goes up or down is going to correspond to the magnitude of the force. Okay, so um, once we do that, then we're going to go ahead and draw our moment diagram. Then we'll be able to identify the location where the shear in the moment are the greatest. So let's get started. So to start, what we're going to do is we're going to take our eight kilonewtons, right? And we know that, you know, our shear is going to go up. If we start on the left-hand side of this beam, our shear is going to go up eight kilonewtons. I like to draw this to scale where possible. So, you know, each box here is going to be, you know, four kilonewtons. So I'm going to come up to eight kilonewtons. I'm going to make sure I label that on, uh, on the graph, right? And basically what I'm doing here is I'm going up that distance. Okay, so I went ahead and I drew this line up. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from left to right on this beam. And as we go from left to right, we're gonna say, well, how does the force change? And, and what you'll notice is from this first point where we have the eight kilonewtons, all the way over to this 20 kilonewtons, there is no change in force, right? I mean, if we could just cut this beam anywhere, right? What we'd, we'd see is that this force, this eight kilonewtons does not change. So, so for example, if we cut that, that beam anywhere, right? We'd have this beam here, you know, we'd have eight kilonewtons going up, and for any any point along this beam up to you know up to a point of six meters as long as x is less than six meters right what we know is that the shear force acting down on this also has to be you know eight kilonewtons so as we go along this beam anywhere up to six meters right let me write that a little bit nicer here so anywhere up to six meters what we know is this shear force is going to stay at eight kilonewtons so to show that that, what we're going to do is we're going to draw, you know, a, a, a horizontal line here that goes from left to right. So I'm just drawing my horizontal line all the way up to uh, the point where we get to the six meters. Okay, so this shear, you know, is going to be um, eight kilonewtons all the way up to that point. Well, what happens after that point, right? So after that point, we can take a look at this again. But it, you know, if we get to this point where now we have eight kilonewtons up, right? We also are going to have you know, this 20 kilonewtons acting down. And you'll notice, hopefully you can see this, but anywhere along this point, right, anywhere here, if we sum our forces in the y direction now, th now this is where x is greater than six meters, right? So here we still have x, let me move up a little bit here, right? We still have x, um, but now our x is gonna be greater than six meters, right? What happens? Well, we know this shear, right, this v, if we take our sum of the forces in the y direction is going to equal, well, what do we have? We have 20 essentially minus a and v that's pointing in the right direction. So we're going to, you know, some of the forces in the, uh, we're going to basically get here that v equals uh, 12 kilonewtons. Okay. And if we, you know, we can look at that and say, well, okay, the shear is going to be 12 kilonewtons. But one of the other things that we have to look at is our sign convention. Okay. So our sign convention says, that positive shear on the right side of the beam goes down on the left side of the beam goes up you'll notice that this is opposite right this one's going up on the right side this is going down so really this is going to be a negative shear so 
the other way to think of it is when you come to you know this point right what's gonna happen well there's a sudden change right you have 20 kilonewtons now all of a sudden coming down so what that's gonna do is it's gonna bring us down so this brings us down right to minus 12 kilonewtons which corresponds beautifully with the 12 kilonewtons we solved and, and also with our positive sign convention that we have you know a negative shear at this location now don't forget you know we'll come back to this but there's also going to be some moment at this location some moment at this location and we can't forget that moment when we cut a rigid beam but you know if we use the same thinking here anytime x is greater than six up to you know the end basically the shear is going to stay the same there's no change in force between these two points right so what that means is we can again just no change in shear we can come in and we can draw a horizontal line so there's our horizontal line we're good one thing to note here right we're down at minus 12 what do you notice happens at this point right at the support we get 12 kilonewtons bringing us back up and that's going to close us to zero which is what we like so this is a complete shear diagram i like to you know sometimes shade this in you know make it a little bit pretty but you know that's that's kind of the bonus right so there's our complete shear diagram right so the next thing that we want to do right we already you know went through soft reactions we saw drew our shear diagram right now we want to draw our moment diagram and really what the moment diagram is i mean we could go into this you know this uh free body diagram we go to this free body diagram and we could solve for this moment but what the moment is is for any point as we go along the beam here right any point along this the moment is simply the sum of the area from left to right of all the shear so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to integrate the shear you know and, and that brings up maybe bad memories of calculus but what we want to do is we want to add up all the area as we go from left to right you know to to get the total moment the other thing that we want to note is when we start a moment diagram especially when we only have you know one reaction over here one reaction here and we have no applied moment at the end if there's no applied moment at the end the the moment has to be zero right so this would have come from like a pin reaction or a roller reaction on the left side you know pin or roller on the right side and there's no moment there all right it's free to rotate so we're going to start our moment at zero so let me move this up here and we'll go to our moment diagram all right, so here we are. Basically, you know, I just extended these lines down, right? I drew my moment diagram. Uh, I'm going to say that, you know, this point at the at the axis is zero. We're going to have positive moment above, negative moment below. But the other thing that we want to think about is, is what is that moment going to be? So um, one of the things that, you know, I like to say is the height of the shear diagram is equal to the slope of the moment diagram. Let me write that out. Right, so the height of the shear diagram is equal to the mo the slope of the moment diagram. And what that means, right, just in general, is that if we have a flat, you know, flat height here, a constant height here, we're going to have a constant slope in our shear diagram, right? So as we think about this, right, we have um, it's a height of 8 kilonewtons. Well, what that means is we're going to slope our moment diagram at eight kilonewtons per meter so if this you know this first meter here is eight kilonewtons well what that means is if over one meter right that you know we're going to go up eight kilonewtons well if we do that for another meter you know we're going to go up the height hasn't changed the slope doesn't change we're going to go up another you know eight meters if we go to the next one we're going to go up another eight meters and we're just going to keep going right until we hit you know eight twenty four thirty two um, you know 30 what's that 40 and you know we're all the way up to 48 over here right and 48 kilonewtons and all we did was we just looked at the height of the shear diagram that gives us the slope of the moment diagram okay another interesting thing is it, it, if we label this you know area one and if we say well area one equals you know eight kilonewtons right we can just take the height of this eight kilonewtons times six meters what does that give us well that gives us you know 48 kilonewton meters you'll notice the units work out nicely and you'll notice that this also equals the height of our moment diagram when we just look at the slope right so that's the same thing we got so we're going to put that in and that's the first leg of our, our moment diagram well what you'll notice here right is if we take a look down here um, now we have what a slope of minus 12 so over four meters hopefully you can see this but you know area two what's area two going to equal well area two is going to equal what do we have we have minus 12 kilonewtons times four meters that's going to be minus 48 kilonewton meters 
Well, you'll notice, you know, if this was, you know, if, if we take a look at, at this point right here and maybe call this point one, well, let's call this point two. Um, the thing that we can notice here is the moment at point one just equals area one, right? So what we've done is, again, we add up the, all, the, all the, the shear area to the left of that point and we get the moment, right? Similarly, the moment at two is going to equal, well, you know, if we're adding up all these areas from left to right, we a1 plus a2. So what's this? This is a1 plus a2, which equals zero. You know, that's not a, that's not a trivial answer. What it means is that now our moment is going to come all the way back down to zero. Uh, similarly, if we were looking at this at the height slope thing, the height of the shear diagram, we have a minus height. So the negative height means we're going to have a negative slope, right? So we're, every meter that we come over, we're going to drop. 12 kilonewtons, right? So we're going to drop 12 to, my, to 24 to 12 to 0, right? So as we come down here, you know, we'll draw that line in and we'll notice that that line follows this slope, right? So that slope looks like this, where we have for every one meter, we're coming down at 12 kilonewtons, right? So similarly on this side, for every one meter, we went up eight kilonewtons, right? And you'll notice the height of the shear, right? The height of the shear equals the slope uh, of the moment. The height of the shear equals the slope of the moment. So positive height, positive slope, negative slope, you know, um, in negative height and negative slope, right? So that's it. So we have now identified the points of maximum shear. So the max shear, right, to, to finish our answer here, we're going to say, well, the max shear equals, you know, minus 12 kilonewtons. And here we're really going to look at the absolute value. So when we're designing a beam, we want to know whether it's the max positive or negative, okay? Similarly, you know, when we're looking at the maximum moment, we're going to say, well, the max moment is going to be 48 kilonewton meters right now what I like to do just to finish this is to you know shade it in a little bit and call it good okay so once we get that you know we've identified that these are you know these portions here are lines um, sometimes your professor will want you to identify that you know sometimes they'll want to say which side steeper or, or, or shallower but in general this is it we've gone through the whole problem we've identified our answers we found what we're looking for and we're good. So, hey, I hope that helps. There will be more videos on the, the whole shear and moment thing. But, um, you know, these are the basics, all right? So as we go through, remember, you know, the height of the shear diagram is equal to the slope of the moment diagram. The moment is equal to the area as you go from left to right. And, you know, for, for shear, anytime you have a force that goes up, your shear goes up. Anytime you have a force that goes down, your shear goes down. And if you get those basics, right, this is a, a super, you know, a super user-friendly way of taking a look at it. Hey, again, I hope that helps. And uh, if you have questions, feel free to drop a comment. Otherwise, keep working hard and keep moving onward and upward.